Yes, Nassim, what do you want to say? Professor, so that was the final answer, yeah? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you can see it in the notes and think about it a bit longer if you want to. Well, guys, uh, let's uh, clear our heads and let's review or truly learn for the very first time what is trigonometry. I can teach you trigonometry, I think, uh, from zero to everything and pretty well if uh, you give me six hours. I do not have uh, too much time. I will try to rush through this. So the first question, guys, is how many degrees are in a circle? Let's see, what do you say? How many degrees are in a circle? My God, oh, you're very fast. Now, uh, the next, uh, of course, question is why and what are degrees? What do degrees represent? Would anybody uh, be able to answer it quickly? And simply? Angles, but what is an angle? <clears throat> hmm. <Huh. clears throat> Do you see my hands? This is a sharp edge. This is a sharper edge, and this is even sharper edge. Correct? Good. So an, a measurement of an angle will try to describe how sharp is an edge of a sector. Or you know, they have some edge and you try to describe how sharp it is. And uh, then of course the question is what are degrees? And uh, degrees, guys, um, the reason we, we use degrees, they, it's actually completely arbitrary. Um, the circle has 360 degrees. And uh, why? Because the Babylonians, they took uh, a pizza pie and sliced it into 360 slices. Just like you go to a pizzeria, if it still is uh, surviving, you know, after whatever happened to it. If you go to a pizzeria, you get the pie sliced into eight slices. You understand? Yeah, supposedly eight equal slices. So that would be a different measurement. It was, it's pretty coarse. If you slice it into 360 small equal slices, then um, you, know, you can use each slice to uh, be a unit of measurement of the sharpness of the angle. So the edge of the pizza slice would be then the one degree thing, okay? And uh, why? Yes, it, it will hopefully still taste awesome, precisely, Alan, right? So, uh, so this is, this is what, what I want to, you to, to, tell, to know about the Babylonians. So the Babylonian number system is, a num it, it's a number system that's base 60. The number system you are used to is base 10. And what's that base thing? Well, look at it. Let's look at the example 153. What's 153? It's one times 10 to the power of two plus five times 10 to the power of one plus three times 10 to the power of zero. Does it make sense? So here is the base 10. It's somewhat natural because we have 10 fingers. You might imagine uh, you would think of base 10 or maybe base five because you can use five fingers or 10 fingers or maybe two as a binary, but why base 60, I do not know. Now, in general, uh, you can switch and say, I can use a number system that goes uh, and uses a different base, right? So for example, maybe an alien has only nine fingers and maybe the alien would prefer a base nine system. Okay, and that would mean that 153 in base nine system is one times nine squared. You see that that's nine squared. This is the two position, this is the one position, this is the zero position, you understand? So it's one times nine squared plus five times nine to the power of one plus three times nine to the zero, which in base 10 will be 129 if I convert it to base 10. If I use base six, what is one five six? It's one times six squared plus five times six to the one plus three times six to the zero and that will be 69, okay? So uh, this is in base six, base 10, et cetera, right? Uh, and in general, a base X system is, uses, is using the integer x and where the coefficients of this polynomial are integers uh, that are smaller, uh, are either zero or one or two or all the way to x minus one, smaller than x, 
Okay, so for uh, for base 10, we use 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And uh, if I used base 6, what would be my integers? If I used base 6, it would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's it. You understand? Does it make sense? You don't go up because afterwards, afterwards when you go next, it's now 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then... Um, Right, so uh, can you quickly tell me what is 60 base 6? Convert it quickly to, to base 10. What is 60 base 6? Base 6. What is it in base 9? Base 10, I'm sorry, right? What is it in base 10? 60 base 6, what I'm asking. In other words, this is written in, uh, in base uh, 6 system. Good. What is 16 base 6? Oh, sorry. It, it, it's, it's illogical what I wrote, of course, right? Uh, I meant uh, I meant 10 base 6. You cannot have a 6 if it's base 6 because you don't have a digit 6. I'm sorry, can you understand now? Uh, what is 10 base 6 if you convert it to uh, base 10? You're getting there, so it's uh, 6 to the power of 1, James. No, it's not 60. How could it be 60 if it's base 6? It's very simple, guys. What do you do? Uh, this is uh, the 1 position. This is the 0 position. It is 6. Very good. Do you see what it is? This means that I have 1 times 6 to the 1 plus uh, 0 times uh, 6 to the 0, which if I convert it to base 10, that simply is... Six. Make sense? Very simple, right? So that's uh, just quick, uh, quick introduction to what bases. No, not simple. Okay, one more question. What is um, what is one one zero? You're a computer scientist, so let's say base two. Convert it to base ten. Okay, one, one, zero. If it's base two, then you cannot use the digit, the digit two. So what is that? Be careful. It's very simple. It is what? So this means what? This is the second position. This is first position. This is zero position, yes? So it's very simple. So what it is, it is one times two squared plus one times two to the power of one plus zero times two to the power of zero. And that becomes four plus two. And the answer is six. That's how you represent six in base two. Easy. Yes, it's not hard guys. It's just uh, there's a different, you convert from one base to another. All right. So the Babylonians, they used a, a base, uh, a base uh, 60. So 360 degrees, that, those are 360 pizza slices, you understand? Uh, they are, um, it's the same thing uh, in base 60. If I look at it, if I try to convert from base 10 to base 60, it's six times 60 plus zero times 60. So it is simply, uh, it is simply uh, six zero. 360 is the number 60 base 60. Okay, they were fond of that. And, 
for the three? Uh, you mean uh, you want to uh, to look at base three? We can do it for base three, but uh, later, okay? I mean, it's uh, I will, we can do bases. We can do everything you want after uh, after the class, okay? So what survives from the Babylonians? You see, one hour is sixty minutes, and one minute is sixty seconds. You wondered about it, right? So that's Babylonian time. Why is that? Uh, why do we, we use that measurement? That's because that how is how the clocks used to be. They used to be circles, you understand? So one hour is uh, 60 minutes because uh, that basically is, uh, is uh, well, it's like this uh, 60 from, uh, from the base uh, 60 thing that we have here, okay? So again, right, here is how degrees work. I already mentioned that, but uh, let's look at it carefully again. This edge, this wedge, is less, uh, it's dull compared to the next wedge, right? Because this edge contains uh, three Babylonian slices. And this uh, wedge contains only two Babylonian slices. Does it make sense? So when you talk about degrees, you're talking about Babylonian slices, right? If it were American degrees, you would only have eight because the pizza is sliced into eight pieces, right? But Babylonian degrees, you slice the pizza very thin into 360 slices, good? Now degrees because of that are not natural. Do you understand why not natural? Because there is no logical reason why you are forced to slice the pizza into 360 parts, good? So that's not an, a natural uh, way to uh, measure angle. What is a natural way to measure angles? Well, that's called radian measure. And you have to get very familiar and, and think about it in calculus, it's much easier. What's radian measure? Archimedes discovered this identity, guys. He uh, discovered that the circumference of the circle is equal to two pi r. And what does it mean? The r here, it might confuse you. What it truly means is this. R is the length of the radius, right? So if the radius is one inch long, the circumference will be approximately one inch multiplied by, well, two pi is what? Two pi is roughly 6.28. You understand? Two pi, it's like two times uh, 3.14. Uh, so it's about uh, uh, 6.28. So that means that uh, the circumference will be 6.28 inches. It's, it's, not, it's not precisely so, that's an approximation, you understand? And if my uh, my pizza, yes, uh, Alisa, it can be pi times diameter, but uh, but in radian measure we are using radius. That's the, that's from the word, right? So um, for a particular reason, because we are going to have um, a wedge. You understand the wedge? It's much more convenient not to use the di diameter because you want the wedge to be in a pizza. We're trying to measure the sharpness of the corner that we have there, right? So if we have a corner, we're trying to describe how sharp it is, quantify the sharpness, good? And um, so the bigger pizza that I drew over here, uh, its radius is two inches long. So what do you think is the circumference? It's two inches multiplied by, uh, by 6.28 approximately and precisely by two pi, okay? If you're interested that later on, I can uh, show you how uh, to derive this property or at least to have an idea about it. But uh, for now, let's just keep it uh, as a given. It's not, it's not so simple. Good. The R is a, bit, uh, is a bit unimportant. What you truly are saying is that the circumference, if you measure it in radius length, in other words, if you measure the circumference by comparing it to the radius will be will be that uh, will, will be 6.28 you understand are you with me so that's why you use the word radians okay here is uh, here is a picture you understand uh, here is my circumference i cut it into six pieces i cut my pizza into six pieces here is uh, one uh, two uh, yes one two, three, four, five, six. It's supposed to be, of course, you, you, identical. I didn't do it precisely well, but you understand the idea. They are supposed to be identical slices and uh, roughly six, you see? So, uh, so then the, so we have roughly six, right? And then if I unfold the circumference, I will see that it unfolds all the way to here and then some, 
right? Six and then uh, six point two eight and then some. Okay, that's roughly the circumference if I just uncoil it. In measured in radius length, that's where you use the word radians, okay? And you can see that if I measure in radi radius length, if I make a bigger pizza, the radius will be bigger, but still the same number of radii will fit around the circumference. And that's a good description of sharpness because it's basically uh, uh, the sharpness, you just take a wedge, here is a wedge made of two lines, uh, place it uh, in a circle, and then you can uh, describe the sharpness either in terms of uh, how many Babylonian pizzas fit in this wedge, or what is radiance? If we're using pizza analogy, what is radiance? Uh, degrees are the slices, the 360 Babylonian slices. Yes, one degree is one, uh, one slice from the 360. What is ra radian then in terms of pizza? I want to see if you are processing, simple question. The crust, it is the crust, you understand? So when you talk about degrees, you talk about slices. When you talk about radians, you talk about the crust. Make sense? Okay, and here is my uh, picture. So this pizza is supposedly uh, it's, it's supposedly the equivalent of two Babylonian slices, yes? And uh, this is just one radius. And to figure out, we're going to do it in a moment, to figure out um, uh, what is the, the angle measure in radians, I just have to know what's the length of the crust in radius units. You follow? I just have to figure out the length of the crust in radius units. So if, the, if I make the pizza bigger, that's not going to affect how sharp it is because I make it bigger. That means I make the radius bigger and I make the crust bigger. They will grow proportionally, right? And then I, and the measurement will still, this will still be the same because it proportionally means, you know, it, it keeps the same shape, you understand? Are you with me? Clear? So how do we figure out uh, how to convert uh, degrees to radians and vice versa? Let's, uh, let's uh, consider this problem here now. So, it's easy to see that uh, 360 Babylonian slices or 360 degrees bring together two pi radians. So in other words, uh, what, does, what am I saying? The combined crust length in radius, in radius units is about 6.28 radii. Do you understand? Are you with me guys? Uh, let me see, let me know if, if you got uh, confused by anything. So tell me what is one degrees, what is one degree in radians, please? If 360 degrees is two pi radians, what is one degree? Uh, Christian, almost, right? Uh, what, what do we do, careful? Careful, I want to know what's one degree. It's very simple. Each slice is bringing the same amount of crust as any other slice, you agree? They are equal slices. Each Babylonian slice is carrying the same amount of crust. So how much uh, does, if, if they all together carry out uh, two pi crusts, how much does each carry? Simple question, yes? If you come to a party, if, if, if four people come to a party and you brought together eight beers, how much did each of you bring? And each of you brought the same number of beers, right? That means each of you brought two beers, yes? Four people came to party, all together, uh, each, each brought the same number of beers, all together eight beers. That means uh, you take eight divided by two, sorry, divided by four and you get uh, the number. Yes, James, two pi over 360. Are you with me? It's very simple, yes? Crusts are bringing, sorry, pizza slices are bringing crust to the party, yes? So one degree is the same as two pi divided by 360, right? Because the, the full crust of the pie must be divided into, uh, each of them is carrying the same amount. So by 360, if I simplify it, it's pi over 180, yes? Pi over 180 is uh, how much each Babylonian slice is bringing. 
That's how many irradiance it brings, okay? So convert degrees to radians, please. Here is two degrees, 180 degrees, 120, 60, 90. I want you to quickly write A, B, C, convert all the stuff to a radian measure. Uh, Brendan, but two pi over two pi is one. All right, so uh, um, the question is, what is it that you're trying to figure out? So this guy is, of course, a review, right? Uh, but if you haven't learned it before, hopefully you will be able to catch up. Okay. Come on, guys, fast, fast. And certainly, if you do not know how to answer this question, you should not leave today. Okay, and I mean not be alive. I mean just you should not go home without uh, without learning it. It would be nice if you just answer uh, in a one in a row. Okay, let's do it together. I don't want to spend time on this too much, right? Uh, so let's do it together. How are you thinking about it, guys? Very simple. Two. Degrees means two slices, right? Two slices is two times one degree, but one degree is pi over 180, correct? You understand, guys? It should not be memorization, right? All you should remember, maybe, that the only thing that uh, it's okay to remember is that 360 slices or degrees bring together two pi crust, which is, again, roughly 6.28, if you don't like the abstract two pi thing, right? Approximately, right? So. Then what do you have? I, I write triple lines because it's conversion, right? It always confused me when I was learning it. I thought, how are you saying that uh, 180 degrees is equal to pi? 180 is not the same number as 3.14, right? But hopefully uh, when you listen to this, you're not going to be confused at all by such uh, idea. So uh, two times one degree, one degree carries pi over 180, because uh, what we have is this. You see, we have, we have, um, what is it? We have 360 and two pi, which means one carries uh, uh, two pi over 360, which is pi over 180, good? So then we get uh, pi over 90. 180 degrees corresponds to 180 slices. And that's, uh, that means a line, right? The angle is here is a line. You agree? It's half of a pizza. So that would be pi radians. By the way, just, uh, just so that uh, I, I see comprehension, let me ask you a, a quick question, guys. If you used American degrees, how much will, will measure a line, American degrees? You understand what I mean by American degrees, right? You all eat pizza, you know how the pizza is sliced. American degrees. Exactly, Heidi. I'm trying to make you sure that you understand. There is, there is I, I should hear more answers. How many slices do you have in a pizza if you're in America? Eight, which means, and then how much of it represents, uh, represents a straight line? That means a diameter. Yes, Rachel, it's four. In Yes, Carolina, it's four. You understand? I'm, when I say American degrees, I mean uh, I mean our pie, uh, the way we cut the pizza, right? But the Babylonian uh, degrees, it's Babylonian slices. They have 360 slices, right? So that's why it's 180. It's half. 
half of uh, all the slices will make uh, half the pie, it will make a straight line. Clear? Uh, what do you mean if I'm not talking about pizza? That's all I talk about. If I'm not talking about pizza, I'm eating pizza. Uh, I had, uh, I'm pretty good at it. I can eat uh, one full pie and no problem. Yeah. If you want to, you, you, you can compete, see if you can eat as much as I. Right? So, you understand what you, uh, oh, you see it's a competition, oh, I see, okay. Well, see if you, are, if you can drink me under the table. So, Okay, good. So you understand how I obtain all this information. So 90 degrees, it's one half of, uh, of uh, 180 degrees, which means it's one half of pi. You can remember pi, pi is, 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 is how much? So in other words, uh, 180 Babylonian slices bring together uh, 3.14 uh, roughly, uh, length of crust in radius units, you understand? So that's how we measure using, using radians. Good, good, Jennifer Alvarado and everybody else. Now the conversion uh, uh, of radians to degrees is, is uh, similar, although uh, we are less interested in that. So two pi radians, if I measure the angle in terms of the crust, uh, that corresponds to 360 slices, which means one radians correspond to 360 divided by two pi or 180 over pi degrees. Uh, well, mm, so we can estimate it better. In, 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 so it's roughly what? It's roughly 180 divided by three. So roughly that means uh, 60 slices, slightly less than 60 slices, actually 57.296, you understand? So one, uh, uh, basically that means that a slice uh, that contains one radian of a crust is uh, big enough to contain 57.296 blah 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 um, Babylonian slices. Good? You understand it guys? Uh, now here is uh, this uh, question. I hope you understand guys. Yeah? So uh, and you understand why I, 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 people are, are so attached to degrees, but degrees are, are natural. Because I mean, you can have American slices, you can have Babylonian slices, then you can have Russian slices, right? There is nothing natural about it, but the circle always contains, its circumference is the length of uh, two pi of its radius, you understand? So therefore, if you use the, uh, the circle to communicate sharpness of a wedge, um, then uh, this is the natural measurement. And the calculus results are neat if you use radian. Also, when you're driving, figure about it. If you're, if you're driving uh, and you have a speedometer, what do you think you're using? You're converting, uh, you're converting the rotation of the wheel into linear distance, yes? And that's convenient to do it with radians. They are naturally related. I hope you understand why. Because all I do is I just, uh, I see how much circumference is covered when I, when I rotate, how much circumference is covered in a second. And then I multiply by the radius of the wheel and that uh, measures the, uh, the circumference no longer in the radius units, but in units, uh, let's say in meters, if I want, you understand? Or in uh, whatever, whatever I, I'd like to do. So here is an example here, right? So here we have a wedge and I want you to actually tell me how many degrees we have if this is the wedge. It's three inches, the radius is three inches and the crust is one inch. How many degrees is this?
Uh, okay, guys, are you are you ready? Come on, think, think. You can do it. And should do it fast. Well, let's see what it is, guys. You should not, not think you should know. So first of all, better question is, don't you sign, you don't need anything. What do I mean sign, right? Look at this thing. Uh, first of all, how many radians do we have here? How many radians, my friends? How many radians is this thing? Here is a picture, how many radians? One radian? This is one radian? Nine. I was told, uh, you know, oh, every German has a, uh, has a very scary math teacher, right? So maybe I, I should quote, uh, I received quite nice quotes about math teachers. Okay, Alan, good. What is this? What is, if this is three inches long, but this is one, you see this is one, ra one radius is three inches long. One inch, look at it, one radius, three inches long. One third of the radius is one inch long. Yes? Inches are not important. It's, it's unitless when we uh, use radians, unitless, right? This edge is always one, one radius. So if, this, if, if so, so if one radius is the same as three inches, you see, so if some people get confused. I mean, maybe in school you got confused. Pi equal to 180, you were, you were told, I think, right? How many were told pi is equal to 180? Because if you were told that, that's bullshit, right? Uh, uh, pi is 3.14, 180 is not 3.14. The, the, the relationship is this. Uh, one kilometer is 1,000 meters. Right, so the the distance measured in one kilometer is the same distance as is measured in by one thousand meters. So similarly here, right, uh, the angle measured uh, by pi radians is the same angle that is measured by one hundred and eighty Babylonian slices. Good. So here we have one radian corresponds to three inches. I multiply everything by one third because I, I want to know the cross, right? Multiply by one third, one third radian is one inch. So the radius, so the radian measure, radius measure is one third. Everybody clear? Confirm if you understand. I see I lost somebody. Um, I, I did a different way. Did you get the right answer? I mean, the, the degrees was, I know the degrees was 60. How do you know that? Because um, I because you know the uh, circ circumference equation, so two pi r. I just yeah. took that right, and then I was like, oh okay. Now I have to put this in um, radians, right? Well, so, I mean, yeah, yeah, I, have to, it, I have to put it. Um, I have to put it under one hundred eighty degrees. So that's what I did, and then I got sixty. Well, it cannot be a rational number, so uh, no. Okay. It cannot possibly be a rational number because radians and degrees do not uh, m match like this. Yes. But you can. I right, no, right, You're right. Yes. You also. You, so you have. You have to. Uh, you have to understand. You think this way, guys. Right. So uh, how much cross do we have? We have uh, one third radian. You understand? So the cross one third radian. You know the song. Oh, the radian. Right. So you can remember it this way. You don't know the song. Yes. Or maybe I sing so terribly that you don't recognize it. That's very possible. So one third radian. What is radian? One radian contains 180 
maybe that's why you said 60, uh, James. It's, it, it, it's, it's like 60, not exactly 60, right? Um, so in, in, other words, in other words, one, we, we calculated that one radian, one radian is 180 over pi, which is uh, kind of like uh, 60 degrees, L less than that. It's 57 something, you understand? But not 60. Because okay. pi is not three, pi is 3.14, right? And, and, and the error is very gross actually, right? You can make, so it's really pi. So one third radian is one third, 180 over pi. You understand how I get this measure, guys? Uh, two pi radians corresponds to 360. So one radian corresponds to 360 divided by, divided by, to pi or 180 divided by pi. And I need to multiply by one third if I'm just using one third of a radius. No trouble, Jenny, but, uh, but uh, hopefully you, you follow. I'm glad you're here. So good. Make sense guys. So, uh, so what we have is uh, 60 over pi or about 19, uh, 19 uh, degrees, which means 19 Babylonian slices. Does it make sense, the idea? You smile, but does it make sense? Guys, it's review. Yes, supposedly people uh, go to this class knowing it. Don't uh, uh, leave uh, office hours unless you know it strongly. And there are going to be other things that I'll mention. Good. It's very, very commonsensical, guys. You see, you need imagination to, to understand mathematics. When I think of it, I think slices are bringing crust to the party, or crust is bringing slices to the party, right? That's how I understand it. And so one third of a radius will bring 60 over pi degrees or roughly 19.099 slices. And now we talk about polygons. What is the sum of angles, of all the three angles of a triangle, please? Let me know. And you use 180, uh, you should stop using degrees. No, not one radian. No, 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 no. Pi radians, which if you if you don't like the number pi, it means roughly three point one four. Good. Let's move on. So, can you guess what is going to be my next question? Well, uh, almost, how many Americans can think? Why? Why does the sum of, uh, of the angles of a, of a triangle equal to 180 degrees or pi radians? How many of you know that? Uh, so in school, uh, when, I, when I learned it, I, I thought everybody knew it and I was the only one who didn't and I actually uh, came up with a proof. Although the proof I'm presenting is better than what I came up with, uh, it's much more um, clever, okay? But uh, let me explain to you why. Very simple. Okay, imagine you're walking, uh, contra you're walking like this around a triangular park, okay? You have this park somewhere in the city and you're walking around this triangular park, okay? Now imagine you begin walking in this direction and that's where you're looking. You're looking uh, along this uh, red line. Okay, you're looking and then here you turn, you're turning, um, you're turning around, you're turning uh, counterclockwise, yes. You're turning, then you walk, and that, that's where you're looking, you're turning, you walk and you're turning. And then you're again uh, looking in the same direction you started with. How much have you turned? How much did you turn? Uh, 
Yes, Brandon, very good. What about the rest of you? How much have I turned? It's a bit uh, complicated. Hopefully I can, I can communicate this idea. You understand what I'm saying? You're watching, like, unfortunately I cannot walk here, uh, but, uh, but here, look at it guys, right? I'm walking in this direction. I want uh, to see, uh, yes, I, I'm watching in this direction, yes? So there is a B, B prime plus C prime plus A prime. How much is B prime? The, out, the sum of the outer angles, B prime, C prime, A prime. And uh, I, I do not know what is each angle, but uh, I do know what is the sum and why, you see? If I'm looking in this way, look at it, I, and, I, and, I, and I only rotate in one direction. I'm only rotating in one direction, are you with me? Can you see my face? Here, look at it. If I, will, if I walk and, uh, and you can see this thing, right? If I walk, I can do this, that, etc. But uh, you pay attention whether or not I'm facing uh, in the same direction. Now I, let's say, rotate, and then I walk, and then I rotate, and I walk, and uh, I walk and walk and walk, then I rotate, like I need to be, like, uh, you know, I, I haven't practiced it in a while, but imagine my neck turning around, right? Eventually you see that I was never turning left, but I was only turning uh, right. And, uh, and uh, where I'm looking is in the same direction, right? It's, it's I'm looking at you again, how much, uh, and that's the first time I'm looking at you again, how much have I turned? Do you understand what I'm saying? How much could I have turned? Must have been 360 degrees or two pi radians. Uh, again, learn to use radians. Here, I, I try to illustrate it in a picture here. But you have to, uh, you have to, um, so we're, go we're getting there, James, good. Almost, almost that, right? Uh, almost. Uh, so are you following me guys? Uh, if you understand this idea, you, you know, you, you understand something they should have understood uh, in school already. Right? If you are turning, if you are turning uh, and only turning in one direction, all you have to pay attention is what's the next time I'm looking at you again. If I'm turning, what's the next time I'm looking at you again. And when I'm looking at you again, there is no need for R. I'm just lo looking at rotation, right? Only rotation. Uh, I travel some distance, but once I'm back here, I'm, I'm looking in the same direction. You see, this is the direction where I'm looking. This is the direction, that's my pen. I'm looking here and then I turn, I'm looking always in here. The, the pen is always, is not moving. It's only looking in the same direction. I'm not rotating. Then I'm rotating in here. And that's where I'm looking. Then I'm looking in here. And finally, I'm looking again in here. You understand? I, it must mean that I made a full circle because I, I began looking here. Then I was looking here. Then I was looking here. Then I'm looking here again. I made a full rotation, one rotation. So the sum of A prime plus B prime plus C prime is two pi, full rotation. Are you with me? Yes? And something else I know, look at those angles. The, I, I want to know the sum of the inner angles. Uh, B prime is a supplementary angle to B, which means they add up to 180 degrees. It's just a continuation of the line, right? they add up to 180 degrees or to pi radians. Yes? So I do, I do a very basic algebra. A prime plus A plus B prime plus B plus C prime plus C equals to pi plus pi plus pi, which is three pi. Yes? And uh, then I can isolate A prime, B prime, C prime. I isolate them as a separate sum. And A, B and C, I isolate as a separate sum. So what do we have here? We have that the sum based on my argument that I explained, this is two pi. So two pi plus A plus B plus C is equal to three pi, which means A plus B plus C equal to three pi minus two pi or pi. Was it simple? Very simple, yes? If you understood it, uh, tell me uh, and figure it out. What is the sum of the inner angles? A, B, C, and D. The sum of those angles is what? It's a, it's a quadrilateral. It's a polygon having four corners. And reason it out, okay? And do it quickly.
Okay, maybe. I want you to reason it out, okay, guys? So uh, not just uh, to guess the formula from what had happened before, but to actually see that that must be the case. You understand guys what I'm asking? The sum of the inner angles uh, at the end of the day. That's what I want to know. Okay. Okay, Carolina, good, good. Wait, I want to, I'm waiting. Yes, good. So let's look at it, guys. What is the sum of A prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime? What's the sum of the outer angles? Oh, now I want to hear sum of outer angles. Type, what's the sum of outer angles? How, four pi? Four pi? Or, uh, more specifically, what's the sum of the outer angles? You're missing my point, guys. Uh, you know that you, you rotate one full circle uh, once you begin looking in the same direction. Look at it. I was looking in this direction. Then 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 I'm looking again in this direction. How much I did I rotate? I see you're missing it. Look at it. Think about it, right? Uh, how do you know a person rotated? Uh, you, you see the person changed its perspective, like I am, right? I, I am staring at you. The pen is at you, right? I move, now I'm no longer looking at you. I rotate a little bit. I walk, I rotate again. Here, let me, uh, let me stand up. Maybe that will help you, okay? Uh, I'm looking at you. Then I turn, 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 then I turn. Then I turn. How much did I turn? Imagine the camera was following me, right? So you was actually walking some distance, but how much did I turn? Two pi. I turned one full circle. I was only rotating in the same direction. You understand? I was only rotating, in this case, counterclockwise. So two pi, yes, you can say two pi or two pi rod is the same thing, yes? Uh, so a prime plus b prime plus c prime plus d prime equal to two pi. And uh, they are supplementary angles. So I have pi plus pi plus pi plus pi. I have four pi equal to two pi plus the sum of the angles. So it's four pi minus two pi. And that means it is two pi. The sum of the angles is two pi. Yes. Sum of the, ang of the outer angles is two pi. And then if I have uh, the supplementary angles, I sum them like this, I get four pi, each of them is pi. And then I isolate the supplementary angles, they add up to two pi. Supplementary angles add up to two pi. Supplementary plus uh, inner angles is four pi. That means inner angles are equal to four pi minus two pi. Okay, and if you have five vertices, Supplementary angles will be, will be again, uh, we have five supplementary additions, right? So it's pi plus pi plus pi plus pi, it's five pi. The supplementary angles add up to two pi. So it's five pi minus two pi, which is three pi. So if you have five, uh, uh, five vertices, good. Alisa makes sense. Everybody here, does it make sense? Victoria, am I making sense? Beautiful. And in general, if I have n vertices, the answer is n minus two pi. So if I have three vertices, it's uh, three minus two pi. Yes, that's, that's very nice. <laughs> that's good. She can join the class. They can all join. You know how they say they all float. So here. No worries, Christian. I like it. It's funny.
Okay, so uh, a comment about uh, triangles. Uh, if you think that, well, it's not so interesting to know what's the sum of angles of a triangle, know that uh, this has much to do with space and time, the possibility of uh, future being in the past, uh, past being in the future, all that stuff, right? Because um, it's, it relates to the theory of relativity. Uh, Gauss discovered the following property, is that if, if the angles of a triangle add up to pi, it means we are in a flat geometry. It means we are in Euclidean geometry. And you actually, uh, there are people, with, it, it calls uh, um, theorema egregium or Latin for remarkable theorem. In other words, if you actually try to draw a triangle and you actually carry out measurements and you find that the angles do not add up to 180 degrees or to pi, uh, then you know that you are in a curved geometry. You understand? So uh, I can draw a triangle if it's big enough over planet Earth and uh, the angles will be 90 degrees, each of them. Okay, so it will be a triangle having 90, 90, 90 degrees everywhere. Okay, so that's a spherical geometry. And those geometries play, um, play a role in, uh, in, you know, in, in vast, in the big spaces. Eh? But, but on small scale, uh, it's not noticeable. Now, let's talk quickly about areas and how to, to describe uh, distances. So if you have a flat two-dimensional space, you can tessellate that empty space by tiles, the unit tiles. It's a square one by one square. It's, just, it's one by one, you just mean you just take the same square and you call it unit square and you try to tessellate or uh, cover the floor with those tiles, okay? And it's very easy to calculate areas of rectangles in such structures, right? Why? Why? Because it's uh, three. So it means this one is uh, three squares long and two squares high. How many squares do we contain in total is how much space we have, right? Well, how we measure, we just take some segment of space and use it to measure other segments of space. So uh, the area of a rectangle is height times width because uh, uh, that's how many squares fit in in a rectangle. So three times two will be six, which will be the number of squares that fill in the space. You understand? What is the area of uh, a triangle? The area of a triangle is that is half of a rectangle. It's one half base times height, just because it's half of it, you understand? Take a rectangle, it's, uh, it, it has uh, H uh, many uh, unit squares up and W unit squares across. And the area is, uh, is W times H and just multiply it by one half because it's half of uh, the shape. And this is still true. We can talk about it later for uh, triangles that are not right triangles. Good. And uh, the next part, uh, so here we can talk about it uh, if you want after class. The next part is Pythagorean theorem. How many of you know the Pythagorean theorem? A squared plus B squared plus C squared, sorry, A squared plus B squared equal to C squared, right? You have learned it in school. And uh, of course, what do you think is my question? Oh. I see a cat. Why? Do you know why? All right, so I don't know. I, I feel rather sad. You're, you're deprived today because what I was going to say regarding the Pythagorean theorem, in addition to just uh, explaining a simple proof of it, uh, is uh, I hope it's incredible, right? Uh, actually, so one thing that I'm going to say about it, it was inspired by my dear students because I love you so very much, right? So very much that uh, I, I imagine what I can do to you. Hit you with a frying pan, you know, all that stuff. So I see you're leaving. So if you are not staying for office hours, we will call it a day and continue on Tuesday, but don't uh, stay long and don't wait. Let's learn it right now before it's too late. I'm stopping the recording. Uh, have a good weekend if you're going.